Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 Pro and the actual hands-on, real-life version of the PlayStation 5 Pro. We're going to go and show you guys the actual video, have a chance to showcase up what it actually looks like in real life, and kind of give people's very first impressions and vibes to it. So if you guys will sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now, as you guys probably know, there's been a lot of kind of controversy. I just made a video on it, how it, a lot of people are assuming it seems a little bit expensive. So I want to know if you guys are still interested in it, if you guys are going to buy it or not. Everything I had a chance to go and see so far, I think there is a nice niche. I think people will buy it. I myself will probably buy it, but I am a little bit biased. I'm a YouTuber. I'll make money off it or make videos on it. You know what I mean? But I do have a little bit of an interest in it myself. So if you guys do, don't feel bad. If you guys don't want to afford it or would rather buy a PC, whatever, totally valid. But let me go and show you guys what it looks like in person. So subscribe if you guys are new. We're going to give one out on the channel too. So make sure you guys are stuff for that. Leave a like in your thoughts and let's go dive on into it. So as I mentioned, CNN has actually had a chance to go and have a proper in-person experience with it and it's cool because we had the proper like showcase we've had a chance to go and kind of, kind of get the rough idea of the specs for it so i'm gonna kind of let them go take it away and explain it but if you guys have missed it basically it's 700 dollars, which is a little expensive pure digital not the biggest fan of that you could also still buy the attachment disc drive we'll maybe ramble about that in a different video you will have a 45 percent overall better gpu same cpu same ssd although bigger due to it being digital and of course well coming out in the very, very near future. I believe pre-orders will be coming out in the next two weeks or so, so I'll keep you guys in loop on the channel. So let's go react to this. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts, and, well, fingers crossed you guys actually like it, because I think it looks beautiful as of right now. Here at PlayStation headquarters with an exclusive hands-on of Sony's brand new PlayStation 5 Pro console that's coming out in... Also, really random comment, I feel like Mark Cerny kind of looks like a supervillain. He's trying to be like, oh, I'm nice and nerdy, but I feel like he's going to try to take over the planet. November. Yes, I got to play a bunch of games on it. Here's what's going on. It's been four years since Sony released the PlayStation 5, which went by pretty fast in the middle of a pandemic. It does not feel like it's been four years. And one big thing to also note is I do believe all this prior technology, and I'm going to elaborate a lot of this more stuff. So on the channel, of a lot of videos is that they're going to probably actually bring all the old school games into this new technology, I believe, which is really, really cool to see and kind of a nice bonus for the PS5 Pro. We would also actually go and see it looks a little bit on the bigger side too as well. Looks a bit more sleeker, just things to go and note. But the idea of next generation kind of lingers in my head and probably for a lot of people. When do you buy a console? Well, Sony has had mid-range console upgrades in the past. The PlayStation 4 Pro. Which I think is still okay. They never sold the as well, but they're there. And know. lo and behold, the PlayStation 5 Pro is coming out four years after the PlayStation 5. For $699, you're paying more, but not too much tremendously more compared to the PlayStation 5 that is already on the market and has an upgraded slimmer version. And that's kind of a big reason why I keep saying if you don't have a PS5, the Pro is the way to go. And there is a lot of people out there for it. Or as well, don't forget, you can sometimes either sell it or trade it in with places like GameStop or even sometimes PlayStation does the same trade in value. So people are upset about the price. Yes, and I may want to also address this in a separate video, but really quickly, it's not the worst. Like, there is a few niches and reasons why people should buy it. The general gaming community might be against it. I do think it's a little pricey, but that was kind of in line of what we expected as a price for a console. Compared side by side, it's also not that much larger. In fact, it's a little bit smaller than the PlayStation 5 original, which is a which nice surprise I got. It's because big. the it's PlayStation big 4 Pro was definitely bigger and thicker. What do you get? Well, there's no optical drive. You have to buy that separately. You which can use sucks. the same optical drive that's available. I wish they would sell it cheaper. And pop it in. And also, it may be that a lot of people choose to prefer the digital version now. Considering I kind of like digital myself. I don't mind it. I can live without it. I prefer disc though, but I do. I don't mind it. Which is the same speed as the SSD in the previous models. Same CPU too, but the GPU is a lot beefier. It's supposed to be 67% more powerful and 38% faster, and it's going to provide better performance for all the games and a lot more things like ray tracing. There's also a big focus on upgrading the resolution of existing games. PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. So I made a video about this, and if you guys want to check out the channel the last few days, it's there. I can maybe even link it down below if I'm not lazy. Uh, this is the coolest technology that will go and backtrack all old school games to make them run better with this PSSR technology. Kind of a really good selling point, and kind of why I'm saying if you've never had a PS5, why well, the PS5 Pro is kind of good. 
is the technology that uses an AI neural upscaling using a convolutional neural network to basically just make sure the games play really nicely in 4K. And speaking of 4K, existing PlayStation 5 games, they always had two modes, which was either 1080p, 60 frames per second, or 4K at 30 frames per second. Sony's now offering a pro mode that glues both of those together, and so you're getting both 60 frames per second and 4K. And that's why the biggest deal where they have a chance now to go and fine tune stuff, because like more options is always better. And like if you're gonna be spending extra money, an extra two hundred dollars, you probably want to go and actually get good value out of it. And I do feel like they are trying. Now I'm not fully one hundred percent sold. Like if I was a normal consumer, as a YouTuber, someone making content, yes. But I also am biased, and I'm, I want you guys to always know that and remember that when you guys watch my videos. Now that's exactly what I would have wanted to play in the first place. If you're interested in doing things like 8K gaming, or you want to do things like 120 frames per second, there are capabilities for games to do that, but those are going to be on a game by game basis. The real push here is for really nice 4K 60 frame per second across the board for your entire library. Which I think is nice. We go from 4K 30 is the consistency to 4K 60, 8K if the game allows it and they work towards it. I think that's okay. Like I'm, I'm okay with that upgrade. What does this mean for the future of PlayStation? I got to talk to Mark Cerny, lead systems architect for PlayStation, and Hideaki Nishina-san, CEO of Platform for Sony Interactive Entertainment. They talked about how, in a lot of ways, PC gaming right now is providing a kind of an on-ramp for some of these technologies, but also allowing Sony to lead a bit with some things like ray tracing, where they're using an AMD-developed ray tracing technology that isn't even in existing GPUs. Some of that will kind of ride ahead, and other things, like maybe more advanced graphics that you might be used to on PCs will finally have a chance to come over to PlayStation 5 Pro. And as a lot of games now are increasingly cross-platform and Sony's games live on PCs, you'll probably see much more of that cross-pollination. Clearly a fidelity push for people who may have really big TVs or really big AV lovers and want something that either looks the best it can be or runs really smoothly. And that's one thing I've, I don't think a lot of people are noting is that if you want to have like you have an 8K huge TV or you have like this 80 inch TV, that's also kind of the big prime market for things like the PS5 Pro because you can actually notice those frame rate differences and resolution differences or even 4K to 8K differences. If you're playing like someone like me, I'm playing on a 27 inch gaming monitor on my PC. It doesn't really affect me too much, but this is sometimes nice for the more like higher end consumers who want to go buy those TVs. Like if that's okay. Like if you want to have a nice comfy couch living vibe, that's okay. And that's what it's there for. On the big screens that I played on, um, you could definitely see the difference, but if you're a PlayStation 5 owner, I think you could also be fine continuing to play the PlayStation 5. There are going to be about 50 games that come out at launch. And that's even right here on an exclusive interview where they're saying it's okay if you don't want it. And I think that's a nice perspective to have. Like, I don't think Sony's insulting people, really. I think it's nice that they're like, hey, your PS5 will work fine. It'll still be running games. We'll still be making games for it. You can still play GTA 6 with it. If you want to be a first-time buyer, PS5 Pro. If you want to go and upgrade and trade in, PS5 Pro. If you are just rich and you want to go and blow the money on it, PS5 Pro. And if you want to get a PC, you get a PC. Like, I think that's A-OK. -okay. Launch with upgrades specifically for the PS5 Pro. Now, while a lot of them will involve the introduction of this new Pro mode that will be able to run I love at the idea a of the pro mode, by the way. 60 frames per second and 4K performance, there are gonna be others that do other things. It could be graphic upgrades to the environment, more people in the environment. So that's a console, let's go play the games. This is uh, Sony's PlayStation demo room where I got to try out the PlayStation 5 Pro on a bunch of games. This room, by the way, looks like a retirement home. In two different setups. The first one, got to play on two different monitors, checking out a whole bunch of games on the PlayStation 5 and then the PlayStation 5 Pro, uh, looking at the two different uh, play modes, fidelity and performance on the 5, and then the Pro mode. I do want to make a quick moment on this one. You actually can very easily see the difference, and I think it does showcase that more in TVs. Looking at the actual ground textures, you can see there's a lot more details, a lot more. It's almost like you like you cook a steak. Like a good steak, you're going to have a lot more of like a crust, you're going to have a really good sear on it, and this is like that golden sear. And this is actually probably one of the better reasons I've had a chance to see the between the two. The foliage is a lot more thicker right here. You have all this water that actually looks a lot more detailed and kind of rendered that in. It looks like there's a nice foggy element to it, and it just has a little bit more of like a bright contrast on the colors going on where they still exist here but it's filled in more here like you this is actually a really perfect example of the differences between the two and it almost kind of sell me on the ps5 like a lot of people have had like a little iffiness on the ps5 pro but so far i'm like okay like i'm i'm kind of warming up to it a little bit price wise yes it still is expensive but i'm like well on the playstation 5 pro that's a horizon forbidden west and then i got to play a few games 
on a big 80 inch screen, including Gran Turismo 7, which has an 8K mode or alternately one with- Also 8K Gran Turismo is gonna be goaded, dude. Ray tracing turned on, which is what I've got right here. I mean, this is obviously the version I would wanna play. It is- Okay, you guys can't see this on the screen and I don't wanna make too fun to see that guy. This guy has like some crazy hyper car and he's losing to a mom minivan. <laughs> The reflections and ray tracing are beautiful. Like, bro, I know he's just like checking out the console, but like, well, we, we gotta we gotta backtrack on that. What the what's going on here, dude? The reflections and ray <laughs> tracing are beautiful. He's like stuck in traffic on his PS5 Pro, bro. What is what the heck? <laughs> like, I got really into playing Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and I think I Ratchet and Clank and the like Pro this. would be insane. Um, what's really fun is that it's just such a fast game, and I do like think. Fast frames, good vibes are cool. Although, I, I don't know if you guys have ever done press events. Probably not, because I'm a YouTuber and Twitch streamer, so I do a bit differently. It is so awkward if you're in a room playing video games and people are watching you. I'll stream on Twitch and YouTube, and, like, it's fine, because, like, I'm in my comfy room. But imagine someone's, like, just looming behind you, and they're like, wow, this guy's really bad at Ratchet and Clank. What are you doing? How come this press guy is here? That's totally happened to me before, and I feel so uncomfortable. It's crazy vibe. Uh, the pro makes <laughs> it feel faster. So I'm grabbing one controller that's connected to a PS5, playing on a PS5 for a bit, and then I would jump back and forth between that and a PS5 Pro to see what it's like. This and is it does look a lot the, nicer. Um, Not even trying to glaze PlayStation, does look good. version of uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which I'm, I'm used to and looks really good. Um, but what looks even better is playing it uh, 4K 60 frames per second on PS5 Pro, which looks buttery smooth and really crisp so you know it is like going back and playing it on the other on the 30 frames it's kind of hard to do um because this looks really nice it does look good sony didn't let us do any direct capture of the playstation 5 pro during our demos at sony's headquarters and they didn't let us do any close-up real extended looks at the gameplay on screen either but hopefully you can get an understanding of what i'm talking about for when the system debuts on november 7th what does this mean for the future of next-gen gaming? Well, that's hard to tell because we're not maybe fully in next-gen gaming yet, but we're getting there by increments. PlayStation 5 Pro is the hottest of the new gaming technology tech that we've seen, and it's adopting some ideas that PC gaming still doesn't have yet. It'll be really interesting to see where games start to evolve and get better along with PS5 Pro graphics, but also where the PS5 Pro ray tracing and all that tech begins to hint at where technology is going to be headed for PC gaming to come. And I think that's a big deal to go and note because for all of this, the PS5 Pro is using things like ray tracing that's been on console or PC for a while and finally integrating it in like in full integrity on consoles. It's been around too, but like, you know, just like fully embracing it. So I can't wait to utilize and see what they use for like AI, super sampling, actual hardware technology, overclocking, say with the CPU, and I'll have a chance to see what the console technology for like the PS6 or Xbox Series X2 will turn into in the future. But overall, this is the very first impressions. There's a lot of news gonna be covered for the PS5 Pro, so definitely go subscribe. There's a lot of little individual things. So if you guys are excited for it, nonetheless, appreciate you guys all for watching. Subscribe if you guys are new. Give me your thoughts and comments down below and I'm feeling a little bit more better about the PSI Pro right now.